Here are some examples on the inverse tangent function. Remember, just a reminder, that for inverse tangent, I have a restricted range, which was the restricted domain we did on the tangent function. So on the inverse tangent function, what's restricted is my range, which is your output, which is the answers you're going to give. Those are the outputs. So these values are restricted. What values can I have here that will be valid for inverse tangent? Well, values that fall with, uh, within negative pi halves and pi halves. Okay, so always before you give the answer, make sure that your angle is within this range, negative pi halves and pi halves, that they are within quadrants 1 and 4. Okay, so let's do the first example. For the first example, I have inverse tangent of negative 1. So this is asking, on what angle will I take the tangent of and get negative 1? Anytime you see 1 with tangent, automatically this is an angle that's either pi fourths or negative pi fourths, okay? Because that's the only place where, where you divide sine by cosine and get 1 because they are the same exact values, okay? So you can see that here. So, um, since it's negative 1, that means either sine or cosine is negative, so that when I divide a negative into a positive, I'll get negative. So that tells me that this angle is not in quadrant 1, because quadrant 1, both sine and cosine, are positive. So it has to be in quadrant 4 then. So which angle corresponds to uh, a tangent of 1? That angle will be negative pi fourths, okay? Now again, negative 1 comes from dividing sine divided by cosine, and since they're the same exact values, that will give you a 1. So this will happen at negative pi fourths. And be careful, remember, this value that you're giving as your answer is your output to this function, and your output has to be within negative pi halves and pi halves. And it is. Negative pi fourths is in between right here. So that is a valid value. Example 2, the tangent inverse of square root of 3. And again, you have memorized the sine and the cosine for special angles, right? You know um, all of these coordinate values around the uh, unit circle, which are your sine and cosine, try and memorize your tangents. Otherwise, these will be hard to, you'll have to, you'll have to go and check uh, pi 6 and divide them and see if you get square root of 3, or you'll have to go to pi thirds and check if you'll get square root of 3. So just memorize them. I know that square root of 3 you get at pi thirds, okay? So how do I know that? Because that one I've memorized. Um, so if you do not know that, then you would have to go and take uh, pi thirds here, and you would have to take your sine, which is square root of 3 over 2. You would have to take your square root of, let me change that color. You would have to do, um, you would have to do square root of 3 over 2 divided. That's your sine, okay? This is sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, that will give you tangent. So the sine is square root of 3 over 2, and your cosine is 1 half. And that will equal square root of 3 over 2 times the reciprocal of the denominator, which is 2 over 1. And you cancel the 2's, and that equals square root of 3 over 1, which is square root of 3. So that's how I know the tangent inverse of square root of 3 is going to happen at pi thirds, okay? Since it's positive, I'm in the first quadrant. If it's at negative pi thirds, then I would have to go to my fourth quadrant, and this would equal negative pi thirds, okay? So this is pi thirds. Tangent inverse of negative pi thirds over 3, this is pi 6. But where? In quadrant 1 or quadrant 2? Since it's negative, it ha I mean quadrant 1 or quadrant 4, not 2. 2 is over here. Quadrant 4. So since it's negative, I know I'm in quadrant 4. 
and I know this belongs to pi 6. And again, we haven't gone back over here and made sure that pi thirds is within pi halves and negative pi halves, and it is. It's somewhere uh, close to pi halves, right? About here. And pi 6 is also very close here. It's within the accepted range. How about the tangent inverse of 0? Tangent inverse of 0 is saying, what angle do I take the tangent of and get a 0? Now, how do I get 0? The only way I get 0 is if I take 0 as my numerator and any number in the denominator, and I will get 0. So that means that the numerator is sine, the denominator is cosine. So where is my sine? Right, because um, remember tangent, let me write that, tangent of any angle is equal to the sine of the angle over the cosine of the angle. Okay? So if the tangent is equal to zero, if the tangent of the angle is equal to zero, that means that sine of theta has to be 0, so that 0 over anything will give you 0. So the sine has to be 0. That means my y coordinate has to be 0. And where within this range, within this range here, where is sine equal to 0? Well, on the x-axis, right here. Sine is equal to 0. So the tangent inverse of 0 is 0 radians. And 0 radians is within right here. OK? It is within the range that is permitted. Tangent inverse of positive 1. Again, you only get a tangent of 1 at pi fourths or negative pi fourths. So since this number is positive, I'm on the first quadrant. That means this will equal pi fourths. How about the tangent inverse of 100? Now, this is a value that we do not recognize from the uh, unit circle. But I want you to go ahead and look at the graph. And remember, this is your input. This is your input for the function, for the inverse tangent function. And your inputs are your x values. And notice how this domain here, this graph, will continue forever and ever and ever that way and will continue forever and ever that way and it never touches the asymptotes, okay? So that means that I'm looking at what value will y have when x is down here at value 100, right? If I continue here at value 100, what will my value for y be, okay? We know it is not equal to pi halves, but it's a number that's very close to it, okay? So for this value here, I would need my calculator. And remember, this 100, it's a valid value for the inverse tangent because the domain is any number from negative infinity to infinity. So this is within my domain, which is the input. Let's look at our calculator and try and get this value. Tangent inverse My calculator doesn't want to work. Maybe it's because I'm recording. There it is. It turned on. OK, second, let's do tangent inverse of 100. And that equals 1.56. My calculator went away. 0, 8. OK? So for this value here, you would need your calculator. But I just wanted to show you that for tangent inverse, the input can be any number. It can be very big. It can be very small. It can be a negative. Any number. And you can use your calculator and find what the angle is in radians that when you take the tangent of this angle, you will get 100. OK? So that happens for tangent and tangent alone. For sine, this number here cannot be greater than 1 or less than negative 1. And for cosine also, the number in the input for the inverse sine for the inverse cosine, they cannot be greater than 1 
or less than negative one. I don't know if I said for sine. If I did, it's wrong. It's for inverse sine and for inverse cosine. These inputs cannot be greater than one or less than negative one. In my next video, we're going to do composite functions using inverse tangent. I'll see you in the next video.